Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of my beginner's guide to Kerbal Space Program. You know, in the previous nine episodes we've had before this one, we've talked about nothing but rockets. Well, we're going to shift gears a little bit on this episode and on the next one, because these next two episodes are going to be about planes. This episode is going to be about designing yourself your first plane. And the next episode is going to be about how to fly said plane in a relatively safe manner. We always have to use the word safe in, you know, air quote, Kerbal terms. So let's go over what we're going to be talking about in this episode. Well, we're going to be going to the space plane hangar for the first time. We're going to talk about some of the differences that exist between the space plane hangar and the vehicle assembly building where we have done all of our other building to date. We're going to also be talking about jet engines and how their requirements are, well, a little bit different than the rocket engines that we've used thus far but we're gonna spend quite a bit of time talking about aerodynamics in particular the importance of knowing where your center of lift is in relationship to the rest of the vehicle and how that affects the stability and controllability of your vehicle and then finally we're gonna be talking about control surfaces and how to configure your various control surfaces of your plane so that your plane will behave in the way that you want it. With that out of the way, why don't we get ourselves started? Now I do want this to be, what would be a first plane if you were playing your own kind of game? So despite the fact that I have over 550 units of science, thanks to our recent moon mission, I don't want to start unlocking these nodes because I want to build this plane purely out of the parts you see in this first aviation node. So we're going to restrict ourselves to that so that our plane is only going to be the, exactly the kind of first plane you might build. But even in just this single node, we got a lot of parts here that are going to help us build what we are to do. Now, what do we want to do? Well, let's head over to the archive and come up with a science motivation for our mission. So I'm going to click on Kerbin and I'm going to look at surface landed. And this is all the science that we have collected on surface landed. And notice the predominance of it mentioning biomes, launch pad, desert, grasslands, etc. like that. Let's pick one. Let's pick the uh, material study here. And notice that we've only done a material study on the launch pad. The fact that it mentions the launch pad tells you that this is a biome specific situation. So if I got to the surface in different locations, I would be able to collect another material study. And by the way, we have here the launch pad. We're going to actually start this mission on the runway. That is a different location. And in fact, there are a number of locations all within the KSC here. And I'm not going to go through them all, but there's actually quite a lot of science. If you just built yourself a small vehicle and kind of just drove around to different locations here, I'll leave that for you to discover on your own. But I think we have now what we need to motivate us. So we're gonna go to a new building. Instead of going into the vehicle assembly building, we're gonna go to the space plane hangar because we're gonna be building ourselves a plane. Okay, so here we are in the space plane hangar. So let us get started now. In all our previous vessels, we have started with the Mark I command pod. That really is for rockets. This time we're gonna start with the Mark one cockpit so let's click on that notice right away in the space plane hangar how the orientation is different it's horizontal rather than vertical like rockets are and then on that because it's going to be a plane it's going to take off in this way let's take a closer look at our cockpit it can hold one kerbal just like the mark one command pod can it's got some resources including some reaction wheels so we don't have to add on additional reaction wheels or some electric charge um, it also has monopropellant, which we're not going to need, so we're going to remove that. All right, let's get started into science. So here's going to be the game plan. We're going to start on the runway. Again, that's a biome. We're going to collect all the science that we can. And then we're going to fly ourselves to a new location. And the location I've picked is going to be a patch of desert that is on the opposite side of the continent. From, uh, that the, K the Kerbal Space Center is located on, and that'll give us a nice little bit of a tour of the, the uh, area around the Kerbal Space Center. So we're gonna go to science. We're gonna do two different surface things. So we're gonna use a materials bay, collect one, and then we're gonna collect a second materials bay. We're not gonna bring along, well, we'll just leave it. We've done this before. And then we're also gonna use two mystery goos. 
Um, and we're going to put one on each side of here. Now, if we go down to the bottom left, and we clicked on here, notice that we are now on two-way symmetry, but it looks a little different than it does in the vehicle assembly building. Um, here's one-way symmetry again. Here is another radius, and then it, go, it just goes one and two. Notice it doesn't go into three and four and six and etc. like that. And that's because the default here is mirror symmetry. And to show you the difference between the two, there's an axis down the center of our plane, and what it's done is it's putting it on equal sides of the, of the axis, not on opposite sides of the vehicle. If you don't like that, you can press R, and notice how the symmetry mode changes to what's more familiar with the VAB. And now if I grab this, now those two are on opposite sides. For a plane, though, most of the time, I'm going to hit R again, go back to mirror. You're going to want this on mirror symmetry. We're going to put these two right here. And our science was finished off with the addition of a thermometer and a barometer. Okay, let's start finishing off the fuselage section of our plane. So now we're going to go to the aerodynamics tab. And we're going to pick ourselves the tail connector A. And we're going to stick that on the back. So that is going to be our plan for this one. It's, there we go. <laughs> and by the way, don't feel like you have to follow exactly what I am doing here. Um, different people might do different things, but uh, I'm going to talk a lot about the principles behind the, the design, and then you can modify and come up with your own designs. Now, this is also going to require some form of propulsion, and for that we need some fuel. We've yet to have any kind of fuel. So, we're going to go over here to our fuel tanks, and we got a couple of new fuel tanks, the Mark Zero Liquid Fuel Fuselage and the Mark One Liquid Fuel Fuselage. Let's grab both of them for now so you can see the difference. One is a 0.625 part the other one is a 1.25 meter part uh, this one's clearly a lot bigger and holds a lot more liquid fuel than this one does we're actually not going to need that much so we're just going to use this one now one thing to notice before i go any further is that this only contains liquid fuel not oxidizer because we're going to be using a jet engine a jet engine isn't going to go into space it has plenty of oxygen in the atmosphere in which you're going to be flying it and it's going to be using that oxygen rather than you having to bring the oxygen with you so all you need are the liquid fuel you are free to use by the way these more rockety type of tanks but if you do make sure you take the oxidizer out i'm not going to use this tank but if you wanted to you could all right, we're going to again go on to two-way radial symmetry. We're going to put one on each side like that. Actually, it might come up a little bit higher. There we go. And then I'm going to hold Alt and copy that and put another one behind it like that. And that's going to be all the fuel we're going to use for this. All right, we need some engines. So let's go down to the engines tab. And we have a new engine here, the J-20 Juno basic jet engine. This is the first of quite a number of jet engines that you can unlock in the game. We're going to grab that. We're going to put them on the back here. Okay, so there is our jet engines that's going to propel our vehicle. Okay, right now actually this is not going to work um, because again the jet engine does still require oxygen. It's going to take that oxygen from the air but we have yet to put on a means for it to bring in that oxygen. So back down under aerodynamics we have here a small circular intake and this is used for bringing in air and we're going to put these on the front of our engines so that the air will come in It'll get mixed with the fuel, and then the engine can burn them. And although I have it connected to the fuel tank, you don't have to connect these to the fuel tanks. You can connect them anywhere, and they'll work just fine. I just think it looks better that way. All right, so far, we got something that's going to be propulsive. It's going to fly, or it's not going to fly. It'll move, but it's not going to fly because we need, of course, wings. So let's get into the wing parts. There are a variety of different ones. Actually, there are really only like two that we have so far. But I'm going to use these ones. I think these are the simplest, the swept wings. And we're going to keep it on that two-way radial symmetry. And we're going to... Oh, I got the stuff in the way. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take these off temporarily. We're going to put on our wings like that. So there's our, our wings. Right now, these wings aren't going to fly particularly well. You need to have control surfaces so that you can... Well... We'll talk about it a little bit. And there are a couple of control surfaces we have so far. We have the Elevon 1 and we have the 
Uh, where's the... Oh, no, that is the only control surface we have. I am sorry, we just have the one. And we're going to turn this... Get the turning right, there we go. And we're going to put them on like that. So these are our flaps for our plane. And we're going to adjust this, make this look a little bit nicer by taking this, taking the move tool. We're going to take off the snap. And then we're going to just slide these down a little bit. And let's see. Now, I, I don't like the way there's a bit of a gap here, so we're going to slide them in. By the way, none of this really affects too much the, the actual aerodynamic properties. Um, this is really an aesthetic move on my part. And now we're going to put these tanks back. Right about, oh, we're going to toggle the snap back on. Right about there. I think that's looking pretty good. I like that. I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. All right. So, so far, we're getting there. All right. What else do we need? Well, we need a tail. We need to be able to control lateral stability going side to side. And for that, we're going to have a tail. We have a variety of options here. Um, but the one I'm going to use is actually this one, which is simply called tail fin. These other ones are actually part of another node that you may or may not have unlocked. Uh, there are these ones, these uh, winglets, and then there is this deluxe winglet. You can decide if you want to use those or not. I'm not going to because they are part of a different node. And perhaps if you're playing, you may not have unlocked this yet. Now we're going to put this on single symmetry. We're going to put this right there for now. We may move this in just a little bit. We need one more control surface. Okay. And... We are going to use these tail fins once again, and we're going to create, we're going to put on two-way symmetry by pressing X. And we're going to put these right here. I don't like, I want them horizontal. Let's... Right there. Does that look good? That looks good right there. Okay. So, we are starting to get a bit of a thing that actually looks a little bit like a plane, but... You may find out if you flew this thing right now, um, you may have trouble flying it. There's some, you have to really, much more than with rockets, you really have to pay attention to two things. One is, where is your center of mass? So there's my center of mass button. We've talked about it before. But now we're going to talk about a new button called the aerodynamic overlay. We're going to push this on it. And this indicates the center of lift. So right now, the center of mass, of course, is, if you can imagine it being the center point of gravity pulling down on the plane. The center of lift is the sum of all of the lifting surfaces, wings, tail fins, even the body of the plane itself, and it's trying to pull the plane up, as this arrow would indicate. If you can picture this, the plane being balanced on this center of mass, but the lift being here, this plane is going to want to nose down. And that is not... A, uh, a particularly good thing, at least not as aggressively as this will want to nose. Diving down in the ground is not a good look. You also don't want the center of lift too far ahead of the center of mass because then you have the opposite problem of the plane wanting to lift up. And in fact, in that particular situation, the plane will not only want to lift up, it will have a tendency to want to fly backwards. Again, not a good look. Where you want this center of lift to be is just behind the center of mass. And by just behind, it actually means starting to overlap with this actual yellow and black ball that's here. You can control where the center of lift is by grabbing these control surf or the wings or any of these aerodynamic surfaces and sliding them forward and back. See how that kind of works? So we can move that forward and back. Now, you can move this to the point where that's kind of what you're shooting for. This sort of a thing here where the center of lift, center of mass are about that kind of a relationship to each other. But to me, although if you want to go with that, that actually doesn't look quite as stupid as I was worried it was going to be. One thing I'm noticing is it's blocking the hatch for the cockpit. I don't like that idea. So I'm going to actually slide these back to where they were. And then I'm going to take a different approach. We have these guys at the back um, to control things. And when these tail fins are at the back like this, we call them elevators. But another place for them to go can also be at the very front. When you move these to the front, we call them canards. They serve the same purpose regardless of whether they're at the back or at the front. And we'll get to that very, very soon. But notice that 
when I moved them to the front, notice where my center of lift ended up being. I really, really like that particular location for my center of lift. If anything, it's a little bit too close to the actual center of mass. If you have it actually too close, the plane will become unstable. So what we're going to do is we're just going to slide these wings back just a little bit like that. We're also going to try and see if we can clean this up a little bit by sliding these down. Maybe get them inside. It looks pretty good. And now this, well, oh, I'm a little worried maybe my hatch might get obstructed. So I'm going to slide this just a little bit forward. That looks all right. We are now getting ourselves into an aesthetic mode. Maybe slide this a little bit back. That is looking pretty good, I think. Now, one thing also to be conscious of with the center of mass is that as you drain fuel, that center of mass will move. In this particular case, because of where I have my fuel tanks, as these drains, the center of mass will move forward. And uh, that is actually a good thing. Having the center of mass forward of the center of lift will make the plane, it'll make it a little bit nose heavy, but you'll still be able to fly it. But if the center of mass ever drifts behind the center of lift, your plane will become unstable. It'll have a tendency to flip around backwards on you. That's not a good thing. So do make sure that as the fuel drains and that center of mass moves, that you'll never end up with a situation where the center of mass ends up uh, ends up behind where the center of lift is. But right now, this is starting to look pretty good. There are a few more things I need to do, though. Number one is these control surfaces. There are actually three different control surfaces on the plane. We have these here, which we call ailerons, and they're there to control the roll of the plane. Roll of the plane is going around in a circle this way, around the axis of your, of your uh, plane. At the back here, we have a tail, or what we would actually call a rudder in the position that I have it right now. And the rudder, if as it tilts back and forth, will tend to want to make the plane go from side to side. We call that yaw. And then finally at the front here, we have our canards. And as they tilt up and down, actually, I'll probably show you. I just hit deploy. See, that's how they work. As they move like that, they're going to create a force that's upwards or downwards, and that affects pitch. And although in the image I have elevators at the back of the plane, it works exactly the same as with canards at the front. So, these surfaces control the roll, the yaw, and the pitch of your plane. But if we right click on them, let's click on this elevon, notice here that all three of these are active. What you want to do is isolate which control surface controls which aspect of your attitude. These control surfaces are ailerons and they're there to control roll. So what we want to do is deactivate the yaw and deactivate, oop, I want the roll, <laughs> deactivate the pitch. This rudder, this tail fin, is here only for controlling the yaw. That's this left and right motion, so we're going to deactivate the roll and deactivate the pitch. Why I'm pinning these. And finally, these canards at the front are here to control pitch, so we're going to deactivate the yaw and deactivate the roll. And by the way, as these were put on with symmetry, as I'm adjusting that one, this one adjusts automatically with it, so I don't have to adjust both. We have one last thing to put on our plane. Well, clearly, this plane's just going to be sitting on the ground as it is right now. We don't want it to sit on the ground. That's not going to be good. So if we go down here, we have a ground tab. And in here, we have all, uh, different kinds of landing gear that we've done so far. We want these ones with wheels on them. So there are two kinds of landing gear that we have here. Uh, one is this LY-05 steerable landing gear. That is a little single wheel. You can put a steerable one either at the front or at the back. The basic gist of this is to kind of make it like a tricycle. You can have your steering wheel though at the front or at the back of it. Um, that is up to you. I don't know. I, I like it better at the front. That's just me personally. The other two here, these are the LY-01 fixed landing gear. Okay. Um, and we're going to put back on two-way symmetry so we can get a look at these. Okay. These ones do not steer. Actually, we're going to straighten them out a bit too. And these ones we want sort of more towards the back so we get a nice tricycle. Now, the wider apart these two are, the more stable your plane's going to be on the ground. So actually where I'm going to put them is I'm going to put them on the wings like this. 
That's actually really wide out. I might not keep them as wide out as that. Let's move them a little bit. But there's one other final thing we do have to think about when it comes to the placing of these landing gear. Actually, that's not true. Two final things. We need to pay attention to where our center of mass is. Okay. If these wheels are ahead of the center of mass, this thing is going to be heavier at the back than it is at the front of these wheels and the thing will just not sit on the runway very well. It'll just go kerplunk. Now you can fix that by actually putting your steering wheel at the back. That's perfectly fine if you want to do that. Um, but the other problem you'll run is when you take off from the runway, you're going to want to pitch up. And if these are too far behind the center of mass, you'll have difficulty lifting the nose of your plane up. So what you want is to have these wheels a little bit behind the center of mass, not as close as our center of lift were. I could probably move them a little bit closer, so we're going to grab our move tool again. We're going to take off the snap. We're going to slide these a little bit forward. I think that's looking pretty good. If you find yourself putting it on the runway and it's back heavy and it then you fix it. But that's looking pretty good like that. I also, I think they are a little bit too far apart, so we're going to move them a little bit this way. That's probably looking all right. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, final, last adjustment to make. When this is sitting on the runway, it'll be easier to take off if it starts already with a slight pitch up to it. For that, we need to have this wheel lower to the ground than these wheels are but just a little bit, not a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the cockpit and we're gonna move this down. I'm gonna hold shift and actually do it this way, there we go. And I'm gonna move down until the point where this front wheel just begins to disappear into the floor of the space plane hangar. See how that's kind of happening right here? What I'd like this one to do is just not disappear. So I'm going to now grab this and we're going to slide this down and again, notice the wheels are beginning to disappear too. I want these to be just a little bit higher, just a little bit, maybe about like that. Okay. All right. And so there we go. That is pretty much the end of the story as far as this goes. We'll take a look at our center of lift. Again, I'm pretty happy with that particular location for the center of lift. I think this thing is starting to look, well, kind of like a thing. I think this thing is ready for its first flight. But before we get into that, why don't we talk about what we learned in this episode? Well, we started off, of course, in the space plane hangar and noted right off the bat that the symmetry mode is a little bit different, or at least the default symmetry mode, than what it's like in the VAB. In the space plane hangar, we have mirror symmetry. and in the VAB, the default is radial symmetry, but you can toggle back between the two by just simply hitting R. We then got into jet engines and noted the fact that jet engines get their oxygen from the air. That means that they require air intakes. Don't forget to add them to your plane. We then got into aerodynamics. Specifically, we started talking about the center of lift and the center of mass, and that you want your center of lift to be positioned just a little bit behind the center of mass. We then got into controlling the attitude of the plane and got specifically into tweaking the control surfaces so each of them are responsible for one specific part of attitude, that being either pitch yaw or roll and then finally we talked about positioning the landing gear so that your plane will sit comfortably on the runway with just a slight pitch upness to it and that's going to conclude what we're looking at with this episode please come in for the next episode next week where we will be looking at flying this thing and accomplishing our mission i hope to see you then